Hello, and welcome to my hands-on tutorial on mastering the loop over items node in NA10. Over the next few minutes, you will learn everything you need to understand how a loop over item functions, avoid common pitfalls, and start using it effectively in your projects. I'll break down the difference between NA10's automatic item processing and when you really need a loop, dive into those tricky edge cases that trip up many users, and show you a practical example to apply right away. By the end of this video, you will have the clarity you need to build smoother, more reliable workflows. Okay, let's start with the basics. Imagine you've got a set of values you want to loop through, maybe a list of URLs you need to scrape. Let's quickly set up um, a set. Uh, I'm gonna use a array, but uh, it could be a webhook that sends you data, it could be a table, pretty much anything. So here I just uh, pasted this list of local pizza shops, um, curly brackets, because uh, any expression in NA10 um, should be surrounded by them. And then uh, regular brackets is just to show that this is an array of items. And now we need a node to uh, scrape this data, right? We're gonna use HTTP, um, nothing fancy. I'm just gonna pass this uh, array of URLs to our HTTP node. And so let's see the result and bam, we're getting uh, an error. And <laughs> I'm sure most of you watching this were like, what is he doing? Of course, there's gonna be an error because uh, we, are passing, um, we are passing an array instead of a specific URL, right? So that's, that's a problem. What we want to do is we want to go over each individual item in this uh, uh, array and send it to our HTTP request module. And why not to use loop over items node for that? That sounds logical, right? Well, let's try. I'll just separate this here and uh, add loop over items. I'll connect it to our array. I'll remove this uh, replace me node. It's here just to show you kind of what's the structure uh, of loop over uh, items node should be. So it has two outputs and I connect our loop output to HTTP requests. So it's gonna be looping uh, through HTTP requests and I'm sending it back into loop uh, node. So just to make sure that here we got everything correctly, yeah, this is our um, URL that we are sending, right? Like the same the same array that we are grabbing um, should work, and it doesn't. It gives us exactly the same error. Uh, we're still trying to send array to HTTP request node that expects to receive URL. So what we actually need to do is to split this array into individual URLs. And luckily for us, NA10 has a specific node for that. It's called split out. And we go into connect our array to this node and then connect this node to our loop. Let's just pass our URL here. So now this URL is going to be split out. Let's test. Ah, oh, something. Ah. Okay, put it in the wrong place. Um, now everything seems to be working fine. And on this side, we want to, instead of the entire array, we actually want to grab our split out node. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen. And you can see that our HTTP request node runs three times, once for each URL, so it's clearly working. And it wasn't even because of the loop over item node. In fact, we can remove this node completely. Let's try. And if we correctly connect our split out to HTTP request and try it again, well, we are getting three items. 
See, the HTTP request node still runs three times and scrapes all the pages. So what's happening here? Well, in any 10, most nodes, include the, including HTTP request node, automatically iterate over input items. That means if your URLs are already split into separate items, the HTTP request node will handle them one by one. No extra looping needed. The problem earlier was that our URLs were bundled together in that array. That's why we needed a split out component to break them into separate items. You can see that uh, as an input for this component, we're receiving one item and as an output, we are sending three items. And so our HTTP request receives three items from split out a node and sends back three items. If we, has, if we have started with a node like Google Sheets get rows, which already returns a list of items, we could have just connected it directly with our HTTP request node, no issues at all. It would have automatically processed each row one by one, no extra steps needed. So if most NA10 nodes handle looping automatically, when do you actually need loop over items node? Let's talk about it next. You use a loop over item node when you need more control over how an item iterates through a list. This is super important for web scraping, handling tricky APIs, or working with large data sets. Let's dive into real examples. Imagine you want to generate a set of uh, images using LLM based on a list of prompts. So I already created this spreadsheet with a list of prompts and you want to save them to your Google Drive folder. How, do you, how are you going to do that? Well, let's start with uh, connecting to our spreadsheet. Just select the right, right spreadsheet and then select the right tab. Okay, we're almost there. Um, then I'm going to use OpenAI generate an image model because well because you don't use nodes like this every day and i want to have a little bit fun with this um i'll just move our prompts uh, here and then the last step we need to save it to our google drive and we're gonna use upload file for that so here um, it's just gonna uh, put uh, data and they know that our uh, LLM returns data as an output. We just need to add a name and I want to I want to use our prompt as a name. I think it makes it easier to read. Yes, so this should uh, this should work. Now let's test this workflow. Okay, it sends data to LLM, and LLM starts operating, and it's gonna take some time, so we will have to wait. And I'm probably gonna speed up this part of the video a little bit, but also I don't want us to wait here. Let's watch the Google Drive folder. I want you to see how the images appear. <laughs> okay, did you notice it? There was only a short delay between the first and last image. That's because Google Drive was saving them one by one but they all came in at the same time from the previous node. We can confirm that by looking at the input. Google Drive received three items as an input. Here's the thing. This is how an A10 works. When it's rating over multiple items, it processes an entire node as many times as needed before moving to the next one. So in our case, it ran LLM node three times and then passed all three images at once to Google Drive. That's why we had to wait for all of them before seeing the files appear. But of course, this isn't always ideal. 
What if one iteration failed? The whole flow could break and the images that were already generated might not get saved. And that's where loop over items finally comes in. It has two outputs, loop and done. Instead of giving all three prompts to the LLM at once, loop over items feeds them one by one. LLM gets a single prompt, generates an image and saves it to Google Drive. Then loop over items sends it the next prompt and repeats the process. It keeps going until all items are processed. Let's test it. Let's watch Google Drive again. Let's watch Google Drive again. I'm going to remove all this. And now it's empty. First image is here. And notice it's the only one so far. The flow is running step by step, generating and saving each image before moving to the next one. <laughs> oh my god. If for nothing else, that deserves a like. Go smash that like button. All right, let's check the rule. Let's check the runs. It's still running, uh, but you can see that LLM already ran three times and Google Drive ran three times. But uh, loop over items actually ran four times. Uh, what it meant is that it did three runs of uh, our loop uh, uh, cycle and then another run to done. And you can see it here. We have four, uh, four loops. These ones are just empty. And then everything is batched together and sent um, uh, through down. So this means a uh, loop over item processed each item separately before passing the final combined result to the next step. Next up, let's talk about scrapers and APIs. And it then notes iterate really fast, which is usually great but not when you're scraping data or sending API requests. That inhumane speed can make websites flag you as a bot or cause you to hit API rate limits. That's where throttling and batching come in. And you can handle both with a loop over items node. Let's take a HTTP request flow we built earlier and add loop over items node to it. Now we can add a wait node so that after scraping a page, it pauses for a second before moving to the next one. Let's put one second away. Let's test it. It worked perfectly. Remember this trick, it will save you from a ton of headache. Even something as simple as saving massive data set to Google Sheets can cause issues and adding a small delay can keep things running smoothly. Another way a loop over items gives you control is batch size. Right now we're sending one item uh, at a time, but some APIs work better with batches of 50 or 100 or more. You can group items, send them in chunk, and then use wait node to give the API time to process before sending the next batch. Of course, all this works great until you hit an error. So next, let's talk about error handling. Loop over items node has three ways to deal with errors, and you can select the one you need in, in its settings. By default, error handling in NA10 is set to stop workflow, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just stops everything when an error happens. But you can switch it to continue, which lets a workflow keep running, provides an error output for that specific iteration, or you can use continue using error output, which filters errors into a separate batch. Let's test it by changing one of our URLs to some complete nonsense. Let's uh, go here and We are running HTTP request and uh, error again. It didn't work. Uh, 
I know the issue. We set up loop over, loop over items node to ignore the errors, but our HTTP request node has its own error setting and uh, it just stopped the flow. So we need to change it to continue. And let's try it again. Okay, perfect. So here we have a done branch with two items and error branch with one item. If you remember, that's a URL that I updated. Now it's separate. By the way, uh, speaking of uh, uh, HTTP request on error, it's important so to set up it as continue and not as continue using error output because we still need to send that uh, that loop, um, we still need to send that error data back to our loop over item to continue the looping. Separating errors from uh, good results is useful if we wanted to process the scraped pages further. For example, extracting links from them. This way we can work with the good results and ignore the failed ones. Now, what about generation image example? Let's say we want to make sure that our LLM didn't fail before trying to save, uh, to save an image. First, we need to change the setting of our loop over items to continue. And then we want to add a condition if data that we receive from LLM exists, then we know that uh, everything, uh, that the image was generated successfully and we can save it. And if it doesn't, it means that we received an error, but we still need to loop it back into our loop over items node so it can continue on its iterations. So I hope that makes sense and that you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or need a further clarification about how this looping process works, please comment down below and I would love to help you. If you found this video helpful, please, please, please give it a like. It's a new channel and I'm committed to posting a new video every week. I already have a few ideas for videos about some NA10 nuances. Once I understood, help me to save many hours on debugging. Go ahead and subscribe right now. There are more cool stuff coming your way. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.